Good evening, high school football fans. This is High School Football America for December 15, 2016. I'm Jeff Fisher, host of the show and founder and editor-in-chief of High School Football America and HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Well, we are here, folks. We are at the end of the 2016 high school football season with some big games still to be played this weekend. Uh, California and Texas closing out their season with state championships. A change in uh, the schedules this week in North and South Carolina also mean that uh, they're going to be playing their state championships this week. So uh, a lot of uh, great action coming your way. And here on the show tonight, we're going to take a look ahead at what should be a a very, very good final week to the uh, 2016 high school football season. Uh, The new top 25 coming out last Sunday sets up some big top 25 matchups in uh, in the state of Texas. Texas, where uh, the big classification, which is 6A Division I, will feature a, a matchup in the top 25 as number seven, Lake Travis, taking on number 16, the Woodlands, Saturday night at AT&T Stadium. Uh, Jerry World, the uh, the home of the Texas State Championships. Uh, Trish Hoffman and I went there back in uh, 2000. 10. And boy, what an eye opener to see uh, 50,000 plus in the stands there uh, watching uh, Perlin at that point uh, in the uh, the big uh, classification uh, knock off uh, Euless Trinity. Definitely an upset and it was exciting to be in person and watch that. Uh, we also saw just before that game back in 2010, uh, Cibolo Steel, which will be going for a, a championship this week as well. It was the only championship that the Knights won. We had uh, Scott Lenhoff on the uh, show earlier this year, just before uh, camp opened up, and he has the uh, Knights back in the state championship game, and that one's going to be a dandy as well as uh, Cibolo Steele, ranked number 17 in the High School Football America Top 25, will take on DeSoto, ranked number 14. The Eagles in their first ever uh, state championship game. They've knocked on the door a lot of times, a lot of big games against Allen, and uh, DeSoto and Cibolo Steel should be a great game Saturday in the state of Texas. You can keep up with all the activity going on around the country, even though we only have four states playing this week, by going to our state-by-state scoreboard. So you'll see our top 25 scoreboard powered by ScoreStream, live updates of the scores. You'll also have them in South Carolina and North Carolina. We'll be tweeting them out on our Twitter all weekend long. For those of you not familiar with our Twitter handle, it's HSFB America, and uh, that's the way to keep up with everything that's going on uh, when we're not on the air. And uh, what a season it's been. It's just been so much fun. And uh, uh, speaking of Texas and and, and big games there, uh, we're going to have a a tiny West Texas town coach on the show tonight talking about uh, playing for a state championship tomorrow, the Class 4A Division II championship. Sweetwater taking on West Orange Stark. Uh, West Orange Stark, the uh, defending champs, their third straight. Texas championship game that they're in. Uh, Sweetwater has not been to a state title game since 85 when they won it. Shane Mobley, the head coach of the Mustangs. It will be an all-Mustang battle in that one, by the way. Both the teams have the uh, the, the nickname mascot of Mustangs, but uh, Shane Mobley is going to join us and uh, talk about uh, their trip uh, some 180 miles east to the Metroplex to play Friday at AT&T Stadium, a tiny uh, Texas town of 10,000. You'll hear that they they, uh, they got to drive some 40 miles to get to a, a movie theater. So uh, they, they love their football there, uh, and we're going to talk about that. Ashley Trish Hoffman and I, uh, when we were taking a cross-country trip a couple of years ago, got to stop in Sweetwater, grab some barbecue there at, at Bucks, and that was a lot of fun uh, to go into that restaurant there. They had a lot of memorabilia uh, saluting the Mustangs in there. So uh, we'll, we're going to talk with uh, Shane Mobley on the show in just a little bit. Our other guest on the show tonight, a uh, couple of coaches that uh, shape lives and uh, Trish Hoffman said this to me earlier this week when I was talking with Mike Machete uh, and Chuck Peterson two Southern California coaches who are uh, going away from the sidelines at least uh, on the short term here Uh, she said that uh, our high school football coaches which we respect so much uh, do more than just coach they are uh, you know shaping lives and and nothing better can be said about these two guys who are really class acts Uh, Mike Machete 
Hometown boy at La Mirada, played uh, two sports there. He's good at baseball and football. Uh, went on to Colorado to uh, play quarterback there for the Buffaloes and then came back home and over the last nine years has uh, taken that program where a lot of people didn't think it could be taken, uh, winning a state championship last year uh, in California. And Mike Machete uh, decided uh, earlier this week to uh, to call it quits, at least for now, and uh, step down. And uh, Mike's going to join us uh, on the show to talk about uh, the, the time there and uh, what what lies ahead. And we're also going to talk with Chuck Peterson, who a uh, longtime college coach who uh, five years ago joined us on the show when he took over the Orange Lutheran program and the ultra tough Trinity League. Uh, Chuck and Orange Lutheran deciding to uh, part ways last Friday and Chuck's going to join us. Talk about a lot of things. Uh, Chuck was the longtime coach at Air Force and uh, was the offensive coordinator there, was uh, an assistant, an assistant of the year uh, from the uh, AFCA. And he's going to to talk about uh, his time at Orange Lutheran, a lot of other things, including the military academies, the great Army-Navy game, which was just played last week, Army snapping its long uh, win streak, uh, Chuck's son, uh, Brady, playing for Navy, so a little bittersweet there, but uh, he'll talk uh, pretty eloquently about uh, uh, coaching at the military academies and what those academies mean in, in the grand scheme of things in the world, and also when it comes to uh, football. So uh, those are the three guests that we have on the show tonight. It's going to be a real good one again. Again, um, Top 25 uh, released on Sunday, along with the other 25, and we're going to kind of make some changes here. I think I mentioned last week we're going to go to a top 100 uh, next year uh, as far as our rankings. And for those of you not familiar with our rankings, they are develop- developed with a proprietary algorithm that we've been using uh, since 2013. And uh, the long and the short of it is we are uh, we were going to announce our, our, our mythical national champ on Sunday, but uh, lo and behold, the season was extended just a little bit as uh took a hiatus last year but it's coming back the uh, the Geico State Champions Bowl series will be played in Frisco, Texas on uh, the 23rd, a couple of days before Christmas, and teams from Florida, Georgia, Utah, and Arizona are going to collide there. Uh, Three of those teams are in the High School Football America Top 50, so instead of releasing our final rankings this Sunday, we will wait until uh, the following Saturday, the, uh, the day before Christmas, to announce our uh, our final top 50 uh, in, in uh, Florida. St. Thomas Aquinas winning its third straight 7A title. They're going to take part in the uh, the Bowl Champion Series uh, at the Star. That's the home of the Dallas Cowboys in Frisco, Texas. St. Thomas Aquinas, it's going to be a double header. They're going to kick off against Utah 5A champ Bingham. Bingham ranked uh, number two in our Utah top 10, just outside of the top 50. Uh, All of the other national ranking services have them in there. Uh, We have East from Utah in there. They're the 4A champs. Uh, East uh, knocking off De La Salle. We're going to talk about De La Salle in just a second, as they will uh, have a big championship game coming up here in California. The other game uh, in the the Geico State Champions Bowl Series will be uh, number... um, 29 in the High School Football America Top 50, Valdosta, the 6A champs in the state of Georgia. They will be taking on number 38, Chandler, the Arizona 6A champs. All of the games, both of those games, will be on ESPN. You now we uh, mentioned uh, you know East and and they knocked off De La Salle De La Salle back into the national rankings and they're going to get a real challenge this week in the Open Division Championship game in Sacramento as uh, they will take on number to St. John Bosco. Uh, De La Salle, the, uh, the, the legendary program under Bob Latticer, at one point had won 151 straight. Only one loss this year. Uh, that was to East, uh, a, a very close game. And uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, the Spartans and the Braves collide. Uh, they did it several years ago with Bosco winning its uh, first state championship and its only state championship to this point. Uh, I know Jason Negro, a good friend of ours here in Southern California, is just pumped up for that one. We're pumped up for him and also pumped up for our good friend uh, Jaime Ortiz at uh, San Clemente, who's been on the show uh, this year. Uh, Jaime, uh, the, uh, the the southernmost school in Orange County here in Southern California, traveling up to uh, Sacramento to uh, to play Del Oro in uh, the state championship game there, Division 1A, and we wish uh, all the teams uh, a lot of success, but when you know these coaches like we do, you sometimes root a little bit harder, you know, especially when it's north versus south in California, you can kind of get away with rooting for those coaches, so uh, again, you can 
can keep up with all of the games this weekend by going to our live scoreboards powered by ScoreStream right on the scoreboard uh, link uh, tab, I should say, at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Hey, don't forget to check out our coach's job board. We have over 250 jobs currently listed on it. If you have an opening and you want to find a coach, uh, we've been getting some great comments from people that are using us saying they just get flooded with resumes and and bios. So uh, feel free to email us to post your job. It's free. Uh, It is job posting at highschoolfootballamerica.com. We're also uh, during the holiday season here, changing around coachesjobboard.com, which jo- does all of the jobs outside of football. But uh, you can get to the coaches job board by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Click on the tab that says coaches job board. Okay, we told you who's on the show tonight. We also want to tell you who makes it possible. We mentioned ScoreStream earlier. Then we've got our good friends at Echo. Echo 1612. Echo inventing instant replay and bringing it to the sidelines in high school football. Lots of state champions using Echo making tomorrow's adjustments today. These guys invented it, folks. There are some imitators out there, and trust me, they are imitators. The good folks at Echo have been doing it longer than anybody else, and you will love their their product got him into the college game this year too. Chad Cargill, uh, the founder, the creator of the technology, has been on the show before. Great guy. Make sure you check him out at echo1612.com. You can click on uh, their ad, their banner ad at highschoolfootballamerica.com, like you can all of our uh, sponsors to get to to uh, find out what they're all about. Also brought to you tonight by Crossover. Get your game film broken down for you next year. Yeah, they do, they give you they save you time and they save you money. Uh, Jason Strunk, who writes the turnaround for us here at High School Football America, the head coach at Lubbock, told us uh, last year got saved about $10,000. And coaches actually got time to spend uh, time with the family instead of sitting there doing that grunt work of breaking down the game film. Uh, They do it for you real well. Get that free five-minute demo by going to crossover with a K, crossoverwithak.com forward slash HSFA. And also brought to you tonight by the good folks at Southern Sport, the makers of the debris inhibitor razor. Keep those pesky rubber pellets from field turf out of your shoes by going to TDI Razor. Razor with a U. TDI Razor, R-A-Z-U-R dot com. Use the special code HSFA to get a discount on your order. Over 20 great colors. The folks at uh, Southern Sport, great people that have invented an incredible product, patent pended, uh, patented, and it is uh, American made, uh, which makes it uh, even that much more special. Lots of uh, teams using it across the country, and uh, they, they last real well. I think I've told you this before. We have a, a garment guy uh, in America, one of the tops, uh, Joe Palma, who, when he tested it, said to us, hey, th- this thing doesn't wear out. That's the only bad thing. <laughs> they may not sell as many because kids can use them all year round. Yes, they're for field turf, but a lot of teams also use them on natural grass, and you can also get a logo on it, which is new. So again, check them out at TDIRazor.com. Okay, we're going to take a, a, our first break, and when we come back, we're going to head to Sweetwater, Texas, in West Texas, as they get ready to go for a state championship first since 1985 in the Texas Class 4A Division II uh, taking on uh, the defending champs from last year. Uh, West Orange Stark coming up on Friday. We're going to talk with Shane Mobley, the head coach of Sweetwater, the Mustangs, coming in the house here at High School Football America. Taking a break. We'll be back with Shane. You're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. 
the list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's Crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2016, USA Today High School Sports and High School Football America teaming up to give you great national coverage and coverage specifically from Southern California. Check them out at usatodayhss.com. Well, for those of you that have never been to the Texas High School Football Championships, uh, if you're in the, 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 the neighborhood of Jerry's World uh, this weekend, you got to go and check out all of the state championships played at AT AT&T Stadium. I got to go there back in 2010 and kind of learned that there's nothing like Texas high school football. So you can imagine if there's a team from your community playing there. And we have the coach of one of those teams on the line right now uh, from Sweetwater, Texas. It's going to be a battle of Mustangs in the uh, Texas 4A Division II state championship game as Sweetwater will take on West Orange Stark. They're uh, playing in their third straight title game. Uh, Sweetwater going back uh, for the first time since 85 when they won the state championship. And Shane Mobley, the head coach, is on the line. Uh, full disclosure here, he's also a friend of Strunky, who writes the turnaround for us. We won't hold that against them, but we're glad, glad to have uh, Coach Mobley on the line to talk about his Sweetwater Mustangs. Welcome to the show, Coach. 
Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. Uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to. I actually, as I said to you before we started rolling tape here, I I had the pl- pleasure of driving through out of Lubbock from seeing Strunky across the country, and I stopped at Bucks there and got some darn good barbecue. But what impressed me more than anything was the amount of Sweetwater football in there. There's a great painting, I believe, of, of the stadium, Mustang Stadium. There's a Sweetwater player painted on the wall. There it was cool stuff. So before we dive into this team, tell the folks out there around America what Sweetwater, Texas is all about as it relates to high school football i tell you what it, it you know we're a small west texas town that uh uh it loves their football there's no doubt about it we've got uh one of the one of the greatest football stadiums uh, ever built. Uh, the, you know, the story goes Texas Tech was supposed to be here, and the first thing they did was uh, they put the concrete down, and uh, our stadium is a bow. Uh, it's all concrete. Uh, it sets down. Uh, it's just so hard to describe, uh, it, but very interesting. If you're a big fan of stadiums and stuff like that, uh, you know, uh, get online and look it up. It is unbelievable. We, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a small West Texas town. Just, you know, we're football – Really and truly is life, and uh, these last couple of years, uh, you know, we've made some great runs, and it's exciting. Uh, I think the next thing next to football in Sweetwater, Texas, is what we're really, really famous for is the Rattlesnake Roundup. Uh, I think we're known worldwide. Uh, we bring in anywhere between – fifteen to twenty five thousand pounds of rattlesnakes every year. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Now you barbecue that too. <laughs> yes, well, I think they deep fry. Uh, they, I think they deep fry. And I have, I have been into the rattlesnake. Uh, uh, of course, it was cooked and everything else. But uh, uh, there's, I, you know, it's just a, a unique uh, small community with a lot of tradition and a lot of history. And, and uh, uh, you know, we're right off I twenty, and uh, so you know, uh, a lot of people are pa- always passing through. Uh, you know, there's some great places. You know, there, it's still the small town. Uh, you know, restaurants and things like that. Uh, we do have a Walmart, so I do think we're on the map. Uh, if, if you have a Walmart, I guess you're on the map. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we have to drive uh, 40 miles, 50 miles to the closest movie theater. And, and uh, uh, you know, you drive two hours to Lubbock. Uh, you know, what's crazy is in our district, in our district football, uh, we'll drive three hours one way to play a district football game. Uh. And uh, so it, it's sparse, but, uh, uh, you know, in our division, in our size, it, it kind of, you know, you have to do a lot of traveling. And uh, we go way, way west, and uh, it's it's uh, not quite El Paso, but I tell you what, I think you can kind of see El Paso on the horizon sometimes. <laughs> well, I know the drive we had from Lubbock down through Sweetwater on our way to the Metroplex was a, was a long one. But uh, Shane Mobley is on the line tonight, the head coach at Sweetwater, playing for a state championship Friday afternoon. And let's let's dive into it. Uh, certainly, you know your team well, but I, uh, I I went onto the Max Prep site there and looked at some of the stats and your junior quarterback uh, Chris Thompson seemed to hop off the the line there I I noticed 45 points a game offensively Uh, tell us a little bit about Chris and the rest of this offense some of the kids that have gotten you to the point where you can play at AT AT&T on Friday you know, Chris is just a phenomenal athlete. He, uh, you know, if you look at him, you're going to say, man, I tell you what, uh, you know, he doesn't look like much, but, uh, you know, Chris is about five, nine. He goes about 150 pounds and, uh, he just, he is so quick and he is just so, so smart. Uh, you know, he just one of those ones that has a, he just has a knack for the game. Uh, he understands it. Uh, you know, last year as a sophomore, uh, he broke his tibia, uh, in, a, in a district ball game. And that kind of, you know, that, that kind of hurt us, man. We were planning on making a deep run. And, and the year before his freshman year, he, he, was a freshman we put him on the jv uh, you know he was going he was undefeated he was four games into it as a freshman we we're getting ready to kind of pull him up kind of pull the trigger because uh, he's going to come up and start as a safety force and and uh you know make some things happen he breaks his collarbone and so this year, uh, all my coaches, uh, all my coaches, myself, uh, we have made sure that we've taken this young man out, uh, you know, a lot of games, a lot of games early on. Uh, you know, he saw – he has phenomenal stats, uh, and a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, uh, him only playing half a game. Uh, probably in about six or seven games we played this year. Uh, he only played the first half. We even had a game canceled due to, uh, you know, out here in West Texas, you can never argue with Mother Nature. Uh, <laughs> she's going to change her mind all the time. And uh, so we didn't even get to play in our homecoming game this year, and it was against our big dish, our big rival uh, over at Snyder. And it was a huge game. Everybody was here. 
But the lightning came in, and it, and it was about 10:30, 11 o'clock, and it was still around, and it wasn't going to let up, and so we had to cancel that game. And so the stats that he has right now are just phenomenal, um, uh, you know, both running and throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just kind of give you know some of the stuff that uh, he has done. He is uh, 223 for 326. He uh, he's got 34 touchdowns, and he only has five interceptions. And one of those interceptions has come in the playoffs. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, you know, our turnover ratio is like plus 24 right now. And, uh, you know, you start talking about our kids, you know, we don't have any big standouts. I don't have a six, one or six, two type receiver. Uh, you know, we're all about five, eight, five, nine, uh, but really, really quick. And, uh, I've had some great coaches, uh, that have taught these young men how to run routes. Uh, you know, it's just not, you know, run, break away this, you know, we concentrate on turning secondary's hips, uh, things like that. And so, uh, Chris has learned to trust the route. Uh, to be on time, you know, he knows to, you know, a two step and a hitch or three step and a hitch or just three step drop throw. Uh, you know, he learns how he's very quick at picking up on running, uh, learning how to read, uh, safeties when they roll down or if they're going to back up or linebackers belling. Uh, you know, it's just crazy what he does, you know, at the same time. He's sitting here, you know, rushing-wise. Uh, he's had 141 carries, and uh, he's got 1,164 yards, 22 touchdowns, uh, you know, and, and uh, he's only got one tu- uh, one turnover on that. And so uh, there's lots of times that, that he, you know, he could probably could have about 1,500 yards right now, but a lot of times we'll lock him down, especially early on in the season, where we said give the ball. You know, mm-hmm. you know. I know the reads there. We know you can pull it, but just give the ball, give the ball, give the ball, and uh, that's. We just knew that uh, that was one less contact that he was going to have on him. Uh, you know, with the injuries that we had in the past with him, and so uh, he's healthy. Um, you know, he's such a great leader, uh, great leader. You know, um, you know some of the targets that he he throws to. Uh, we have a young man that. Um, it's planning on walking on to Texas Tech. Uh, really wants to go there real, real bad. His name is Luke James. Uh, Luke has done a great job. Uh, he was a movement for us. Uh, you know, Luke stands about, oh, he's about 5'8". You know, and he goes about uh, 160, but he is lightning quick. Uh, very good on his feet. Uh, he came in, and, and we really worked with him on, on learning how to run routes and run hard and break throughs and, and uh, you know, chop your feet on certain uh, uh, certain routes, you know, this and that, and he picked that up very, very quick. But uh, the, the go-to guy this year was a kid that played on JV for us. He's a junior. Um, he's sitting with 1,239 yards right now, 12 touchdowns, uh, and his name is Kobe Clark. And uh, Kobe's a young man that, uh, you know, in junior high he played football, but he tore his ACL, big, big basketball kid. And, and uh, you know, out here we're so small that these kids do everything. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we had a kid that walked on to the University of North Texas. Uh, is our first Division One kid to go play uh, probably since 2006 uh, out here. And uh, uh, his name was Michael Lawrence, and he was one that went from football to basketball to track to golf and baseball. You know, uh, it's just multiple sports. We try to get the kids involved uh, in as much as possible. No, you know, our makes offensive sense. line that, yeah, you know, you, you've got, and plus it, it gives you something to do. You know, like I said, we don't have a movie theater. We don't have a youth <laughs> center. There, there's not a lot of stuff in this small town to do. I promise you this much. Our, our boys do know how, and, and I'll tell you this, I think we have more kids that drive pickup trucks than they do cars. And uh, every one of these guys out here, uh, man, they love to go out and hunt and fish. And uh, uh, it's just amazing. You know, they'll, they'll leave. Uh, they couldn't wait for bird season to open up this year because uh, uh, they would leave football practice and they'd go out bird hunting, you know. <laughs> Real small town, that's for sure. Well, I got you off track there, but let's get back to that offensive line that gives you some pretty good balance, uh, whether it's running or throwing the football. Yes, sir. You know, our, our offensive line is, uh, you know, we're sitting here, my, my center, he's about five foot seven and, uh, he goes about, he's probably 185, 190. You need to uh, feed these you know, kids, coach. Hey, <laughs> I, 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 I'm telling you what, 
if I can figure it out. Now we've got two, uh, you know, decent sized offensive tackles that do a great job off the edge. You know, help picking up the backside and stuff. Uh, Nick Castillo uh, and Kevin Houston, they really, really do a good job. And then I've got a two way starter in Tate Rainey, and he's probably the leader of the group. He's very vocal. Uh, he, he's our rattlesnake. There's no doubt about it. He's the one that that kind of gets those boys going. Uh, he starts as my nose guard. Um, you know, if we go to a forefront, he's a defensive tackle and he plays right guard for us. Uh, you know, and, and Tate, he's the same way, man. He's he's about five foot ten, and he's probably about two thirty, two forty, and uh, he just he is nonstop. If he if he hasn't played. There might have been one game this year he played where he didn't start cramping up. You know, we uh, we got to make sure that we put water down these boys and and uh, you know give them the the uh, the Gatorade as much as possible because uh, they do. You know, we carry about thirty five. We carried about thirty four on varsity this year. We had two or three that had uh, some injuries, and uh, so you know they they play both ways. They get after it. It's, it's just phenomenal. Wow. And uh, we're going to flip over to the defense here because I know West Orange Stark, uh, 787 points and only 63 allowed on defense. We'll talk about that in a second. But let, <laughs> let's go to your defense first. And, you know, it's a, it's kind of a double question here. Obviously, um, you know, you, you've had the defense play well. And it looks like in the postseason, you're going to need that, obviously, on Friday. But you've got your uh, your son, your senior son there, uh, leading tackler on the team. So not only are you playing in a state championship game, there's a father-son story there. So tell me a little bit about your relationship with your son how big friday is and then we'll get into some of the other kids on defense now i tell you what i've been asked a couple times this weekend and i don't know if there's been one time that i've been able to to answer without kind of get teary eyed um you know i am so honored uh hunter is he's 100 percent a coach's kid there's no doubt about it uh you know he loves life he's adventurous he's one of the big hunters and fishermen and all that kind of stuff but uh he is one that has the last three years he has led our defense and tackling uh and sacks and things like that uh you know hunter's not very big he's he's about six foot and uh, he goes about 180 and uh, he plays outside linebacker our defense is very very multiple uh we're, we're you know we base out of a 4-3 is, is our base foundation but uh, uh i've got a kid that will play defensive end we call him razorback we'll have a sam linebacker a mike linebacker will linebacker and a razorback and a razor is one that's going to be able to, to drop down and play as a defensive end or a defensive tackle going to be able to drop back play as an inside linebacker and then if we need to go to a 3-3 stack look or you know drop another guy back in the secondary because you know you see tempo so much nowadays uh you know hunter's a he's one that he can roll back and play safety uh and so uh he's he's very dynamic very you know he attacks the ball he is always non-stop everybody always compliments me and and uh on just his passion of playing uh he's 100 miles an hour he does a great job on his reads um you know, he sits down and we'll study film. You know, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to go home and, and talk to him and visit with him uh, about life and about other things besides football. But he is one that he, you know, he wants to talk football. He wants to, you know, know what's going on. He wants to study it. He's, he's been talking to me. He's a senior. He's been talking to me about maybe getting into the coaching business, uh, you know, going to college, become a coach. And that just fires me up, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I love it. I say, now, son, you may want to think twice about it. But, uh <laughs> Uh, you know, it, you can't find a better, more, you know, this profession is just unbelievable. Uh, it really is. The, the impact that you can have on young men's lives uh, is, is worth millions of dollars, you yep. know. Uh, and I told him, I said, don't get into coaching for for the money side of things. Uh, get into to, to, if you have a passion and you love what you do, then you'll go through life a happy man. And uh, uh, so, you know, we've been talking about that, but he is, uh, he leads our defense. Uh, but right next to him, and one thing that's made us successful is this group of linebackers that I've got, uh, three of them, three of the four, um, has started for me for the last three years. Uh, you know, they've been on our, our 13 and one run, our, our 12 and one run, and now we're sitting here in the state championship football game. The other one uh, is Keontae McCoy. Uh, Keontae, he's he's probably the next Division One kid, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, that's going to come out of Sweetwater. He is one that uh, um, he started as a freshman. Uh, his first his first taste of high school football was a varsity scrimmage, and he's never looked back. And uh, this young man's only lost three football games as a junior uh, in his career, and. Um, 
uh, he, you know, Keontae stands about, he's, he's about six foot. He's almost six foot one. Uh, he's about 210. And, uh, you know, he's a 4740 kid. Uh, great kid. You know, the thing about it is, is, is what's scary about him is, is right now he's 15 years old. Uh, <laughs> uh fixing to turn 16. Mm. And he is just a man child. And he and Hunter, they love to compete. They want to know who's got the most tackles, who's got the most PBUs, you know, from the linebackers point of, uh, point of things. And uh, right there in the mix is, is I start running back. Uh, you know, this young man had uh, some injuries his sophomore year. Uh, he had a torn meniscus going into uh, – it happened our last playoff game – our district game, I'm sorry, last year. But uh, his name's Jacoby Hunt. Uh, he's, uh, he's being highly recruited, uh, more amongst the, the Division II schools. Uh, but uh, uh, Jacoby is, I mean, he's, he's a bowling ball. He is, he is compact. He brings the heat whenever he makes tackles. Uh, he's just unbelievable. And so, uh, and then Keontae's older brother, but smaller brother, uh, Jordan McGee, also plays outside linebacker for us, and he does a great job. We, we roll him quite a bit. He's one that usually plays to the wide side of the field. Uh, you know, he's, he's our slot receiver. He's one of the ones that goes both ways. He knows routes. He knows how to run the routes, and so he knows how to study defensively, and kind of sees, you know, if uh, if if we get trips formation, he'll he'll look to see where they line up at, and he's going to expect the curl route, or he's going to expect the out route, and and he does a great job of just jumping those routes, and he's one that we can kind of lock down on if if we want to, you know, still play a cover two look, but put a linebacker man up on the inside, and and uh, you know, kind of double cover somebody if we want to, uh, you know, we call that hawk, and, and he he's kind of our hawk guy, if you will. Um, you know, and then, you know, secondary-wise, we, we roll our secondary. Uh, they do a great job. You, we base out of a cover, too, but, uh, you know, times they'll yell it. I do not call the secondary. I call the defense, and I leave it up to the secondary because if I call, uh, you know, a cover three look and they've got a four possible verts, you know, we're lining ourselves up to get beat. And so I let the secondary make the call. The secondary talks to the linebackers. The linebackers talk to the defensive line. And, you know, being here for five years and being with this group of boys, uh, you know, the majority of them for three it's one thing that uh, they know how to run the defense they're out there and honestly i have not called i have not called a defensive play uh but maybe five times five plays out of the last four ball games because we go to automatics Mm -hmm. and uh the kids pick it up they make a call we we get a certain offensive formation we're going to do this if something's not working or they're, they're pinpointing something all i do is go to that position and say hey instead of running jam run a hammer and just talk to that one kid because they're out there on the field. They're on the offensive side, and, and you get to the defensive side. You've got to run out there in the huddle sometimes and say, hey, listen, from now on, and Cougar, don't, uh, don't jam, uh, run a hammer. You know, and, and you just tell them, and here we go. <laughs> well, that <laughs> so ex- experience, so experience helps. And by the way, Coach, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little life's lesson here. So you said Hunter enjoys hunting. What did you think when you named him that? <laughs> That he wouldn't like hunting? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, being a West Texas kid, there's no doubt about it. Now, and I'll be honest with you, I'll, I'll top you on that one. I, I, you know, I was a big Dukes of Hazzard fan. And, I, you know, Bo Luke Duke. And so I really wanted to name him Bo. And I wanted to name him Bo Hunter Mobley. And uh, so uh, uh, I didn't win that battle. You got overruled. But, uh, so uh, he did take, you know, his middle name is, 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 my, is my middle name. It's Hunter Shane. But uh, I even tried crankbait, you know, crankbait <laughs> mob. It's called CB. Uh, I mean, I always thought he'd be a linebacker, and he wound up being a linebacker. And, and, uh, but uh, I you know, always thought CB would be a pretty cool linebacker name, if you will. Oh, and, that's uh, <laughs> good. I like that. I, you, like, that's a good marketing at a young age. We're talking with Shane Mobley tonight, the head coach at Sweetwater <laughs> High School in West Texas, having a lot of fun. I, and I knew we'd have fun. And, and any friend of Strunky's is going to like to talk. I guess that's the best point. But no, no, I'm just teasing you. There's no doubt. Let's co- Coach, let's go into uh, to Friday's game. Uh, West Orange Stark, I mentioned it earlier, third straight title game um last year they won the state championship the number that hops off the page at me and i'm sure you saw this you know as soon as you started going into it is their defense eight shutouts um 63 points allowed this season they they are averaging 52 on offense but tell me how good is this west orange stark defense they are the real deal uh you know and here's the deal We're, we've always told our kids, and they, they believe this, we will always respect who we play, but we will not fear them. And uh, 
you know, and they, and they are they are they are as talented as I've ever seen, and I think they can compete with a lot of the upper divisions. Uh, you know, when you have a group as sophomores that make it to the state championship game, and they go back as juniors, you know, those as sophomores they did it for the upperclassmen, and you know they were part of that. When they're juniors, you know, hey man, we're going to do this for the seniors because we want to come back. And now that they're seniors, uh, you know, they've made a statement, and everybody in, in the state of Texas has known in this division that West Wing start. Uh, you know, was coming back. That they're loaded. They've got a great quarterback in Jack Dallas. Uh, they've got some stud receivers, a huge offensive line, uh, and they're you know, and they are they're senior heavy. Uh, they've got some great juniors. You know, a lot of talent in that class. But their senior class is what makes them tick. And uh, you know, we respect them. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But all along, and since we've been talking about it since the first day of two days, uh, uh, you know, you talk about just give us a chance. That's all we want. We want that chance. We want that opportunity. And uh, each week, we, we've never looked ahead. Uh, you know, each week that we prepare, you prepare for that that team who you played. Last week, we didn't talk about West Orange Stark. We didn't talk about Navarro. We worried about Gilmer. And this week, we've been looking at uh, West Orange Stark. And, I, and, it, and a lot of people ask me, where's their weakness? And I said, come study film with me and help me find some. <laughs> you know, they are very, very talented. Uh, you know, but the thing is, 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 is that's what I told our, our, my team. And, you know, that's what I told this, our group of Mustangs is we have the opportunity. You're the one that has the chance. You're the one that has this opportunity to play in the state game and become the state champions. And that's all we ask for. And uh, so, you know, and I, I do. I hope, uh, you know, my, my deal is I told the boys that you're going to go out and you're going to play every single snap as hard as you possibly can and you'll find yourself making plays you'll do some stuff that other teams haven't been able to if you'll just play as hard as you possibly can and never give up shane mobley on the line giving us advice as uh, his sweetwater mustangs take on the mustangs from west orange stark class 4a division 2 state title game at AT at&t stadium and that's probably a good segue into the next question coach Uh, when i went there in 2010 uh you know that screen is impressive (laughs) above the playing field (laughs) the 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 crowd is crazy i'm sure that sweetwater is going to be shut down on friday too by the way but um what how do you get the kids ready to play in a venue like that because you know you the mustang bowl is pretty good but it it ain't AT and T. So do you, do you do something to kind of bring them down a little bit? You know, I think it was a huge it, it was a huge decision that we made last week. Uh, we went to Baylor and played at McLean Stadium. It's a brand new field. It's beautiful. It's unbelievable. We've never played anything like that before. And uh, so for us to walk in, you know, somebody asked me the other day, "Well, did you pull out the tape measure and do it?" You know, kind of like Hoosiers and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And I said, honestly, yes, we we didn't pull out the tape measure or the yardstick or any of that kind of stuff. But I, but we told the boys, if you pick this carpet up right here and you lay it in Sweetwater, Texas, or if you lay it in Fort Stockton, Texas, or if you lay it in Monahans, Texas, it's going to lay down exactly like the carpet that is there. And uh, when it says that this is a football field, and and uh, don't forget the game. You know, there is a lot of distractions. You know, we're going to go and stay the night, uh, Thursday night. And I've already told them, I'm taking up your cell phones. You know, we're going to take all that away. We plan on getting there a little bit early. I want to take them to watch the game uh, on Thursday night, the late game on Thursday night for about an hour. You know, just to let them walk in because I think I've got three kids on this team, maybe four kids on this team that's that's been in that stadium. Mm. The rest of them, they've never been in. And you've got to get that off factor out. Uh, when I was in Prosper with uh, uh, Coach and Coach Peterson's son, uh, you know, we played in the old Texas Stadium, and we were fortunate enough to go over there one, you know, on a Wednesday and kind of do a walkthrough and let them take the pictures and do all that kind of stuff and get that awe out of it. And uh, so you just you got to talk to your kids. You got to let them know reality. Um, you know, you kind of put pictures up and you, you you print them and you put them in the dressing room to kind of show them. But uh, you know, when they're able to, when they're going to be able to walk into that dressing room where the Dallas Cowboys are, you know, because we are the home team and we're playing the first game on Friday. Uh, you know, th- there's going to be a lot of perks and a lot of things to it. Just uh, having all the passes and pulling the, the pulling the buses underneath the backside, you know, and, you know, underneath the stadium and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you just got to talk to them and, and let them know. And I've always done that. Uh, we uh, we walked. We had to practice. Um, we played a team earlier this, this year that you kind of had to walk through the entrance gate where the fans are coming in. So on Wednesday's practice, we left the field house, walked around our stadium, and came through the gate <laughs> of where – uh, yep. You know, where our, our, our fans come in, you know, you just do, you got to remember, this is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old young men. And so you want to try to cover all your bases with them. 
Yep, you got to be an educator, and that's what you are. We're talking with Shane Mobley tonight, uh, head coach at Sweetwater. We're wrapping things up. Uh, a couple of uh, final pieces of business here. You mentioned Coach Chuck Peterson, who's going to be on the show, actually, uh, coming up here a, a little bit later uh, in the hour. But um, uh, he told me uh, a story that you shared uh, before we rolled tape here, but I, I want you to tell it because I thought, you know, the great thing about High School Football America and this radio show over the last six years is you get some nuggets every so often that, you know, goes beyond the game itself and, and Chuck said, you got to ask Coach about his trips to the cemetery with his players when he was uh, at Prosper <laughs> there. So t- tell us a little bit about what the heck uh, a-, a cemetery and high school football have in common. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the deal. you got to remember, football is a game. And for high school kids, there's not a lot of them that's going to make a career out of that. Very, very few are. And and, it, and I think high school football is the purest form of football. You know, high school athletics is the purest as it comes. And you're not worried about scholarships. You're not worried about, you know, the draft and all that kind of stuff. You're, you're playing the sport. And, um, you know, with that being said, we have team meetings on Thursdays. And uh, here in Sweetwater, every one of my kids, uh, very, very few of these football players on this team uh, drive, drive cars. Every one of them have pickup trucks. And uh, uh, it, it's just crazy. But we'll pull up in the back of, you know, they pull the trucks up in a circle and they all get on the tailgates and sit on the toolboxes and all that kind of stuff. And we don't talk football. We talk life. We talk about what it's going to be like to be a, a, a dad one of these days. You're going to talk about, you know, the, the struggles. You know, kids talk about if they have parents that, that may have cancer or, you know, there's so many issues outside. And when kids can trust and open up, when those boys can talk, and we, we say it's a blood in, blood out, whatever is talked in this circle, you do not talk outside. It does not go anywhere else. And so once you make the playoffs, you know, if you're blessed and fortunate enough to make the playoffs, you know if you get beat, that's the end of your season. And the family that you start to build up and, and you start building your team way in the – what we call it – we don't call it off season. There's no such thing as off for us. We call it strength and conditioning. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you start building that family, and, uh, and then, it, then it comes alive during the season. Well – in the playoffs, we would, we'll go out to the cemetery. We'll pull our trucks up and, and, uh, we'll sit there. And a lot of times around the cemetery, there's a major highway. You know, out here, there's one off the interstate, uh, in Prosper. I think it was 380 that was out there. And, and we pull our trucks up. And the first thing we talk about is, is, you know, an 18 wheeler would be passing by. And I said, guys, where's that truck right there going? No clue. You know, is it headed to California? Is it headed to, you know, is it headed to Florida, to Chicago? Where's, where's its destination? I said, that's your life. I said, you boys, when you graduate, you are going to go to college. You're going to go to the workforce. You're going to become dads. You, you don't know what you're going to become. You may become somebody very, very famous. You may come into a, a, a world of hurt. You know, uh, it's a dog-eat-dog world. But for a team, for this family that we have built, if we do not take care of business, you know, the next night or that next afternoon, then this family passes away. Uh, you know, seniors, you go on, you go to basketball, you go to graduation and you go to life. You juniors, your family starts, it begins. And, uh, and it, it, it has always hit these young men in the heart. Uh, it is always just, you know, it, it comes to realization that if they're a true family, you get them to play above and beyond. And, uh, you know, that year with that I had coach, uh, Peterson's son, Chase, that group of boys, I still believe to this day, we would still be playing because not because they were just studs or anything like that. They were scared to lose because they did not want it to come to an end. And uh, that that's carried on since me. You know, and I've done it years before. I brought it with me to Prosper. And uh, because, again, football is just a game. And it's what you can learn from this game is huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great, great, great story. Uh, Sweetwater taking center stage at the start of High School Football America tonight, playing uh, West Orange Stark in the 4A Division II Championship game Friday at AT&T Stadium. And the last question before we go, and, you know, Strunky knows I love him, but he's also like a bad penny. He keeps coming back to Laguna <laughs> Beach, and I don't know how to get rid of that guy from Lubbock right now. But i got to ask the question. You you like him. I, I mean, I put up with him. I mean, what? no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you what, uh, Strunk, 
dog is a diamond out here in West Texas. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that this is the greatest profession ever, and you meet some great guys. And and and, and when you find guys that have a true passion, uh, not just for the game, but for what they do and for for the kids. And he is one. He he he's one that uh, man. I, you know, we share stories like that. And and uh, you know, I keep telling him. I said one of these days we need to work together. And uh, uh, he does. He he's a great great guy. Now I'll tell you this much. I'm I'll never talk to him again next time he goes out to Laguna Beach and he doesn't take me with him. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm cutting the friendship off. I'm right there. And so, but uh, he's going to go to AT&T. He's going to be there. Uh, he might even be down on the sideline with us. He was on the sideline for, uh, with us last week at, uh, at McLean Stadium there at uh, Baylor. And uh, he just phenomenal. You know, it is just a blessing. He took a couple pictures. I didn't know. He, he sent them to me on my phone, uh, my son and I. And those are memories and things I'll, I'll always be able to cherish. And uh, that's something that nobody will ever be able to take away. Yeah, no, he's 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 a good guy. I, I just do you understand when he speaks his Pennsylvania Dutch? I mean, I know he had to get used to your draw, but I mean, do you understand what he says with some of that <laughs> goofy Pennsylvania Dutch stuff that we were, you know, because we're from the same hometown. Every every so often, people say, well, "What did you just say?" I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> but yeah, you know, I had to have a translator on my phone sometimes just to you know tell me what he's saying. <laughs> well, at least he's learning how to spell. That's the good thing. Hey, hey, coach. Before we let you go, I'm going to ask you the the big question going into Friday. You talked about your players and what you're going to have to do with AT&T, but what are the boxes you're going to have to check that at the end of the day, if you guys check these boxes, there's a good chance that Sweetwater can win its first state championship there in Texas since 85. What are the keys? The biggest thing is, is, is we have to play together. We have, we have to go in as one unit, and this group of boys have done that. Uh, they, they know what they're going into, and we cannot back down. We're going to have to play four quarters of football and give it every single thing we got. Uh, these, these young men know that they're champions. They know what they've accomplished and what they've done in this town and to light it up that uh, it hasn't been done uh, since 1985, and it was not an easy task, and they put in – five hard years of work, you know, and, and, and believing in me and my coaches and us believing in them, uh, you know, every coach is going to tell you we have to execute, and that you know, and and that that's that's it. You know, you have to execute. We have to go in and play our style of football. We've got to ride that first wave. Uh, we've got to win the first quarter. We can't win the ball game early on. We got to win it quarter by quarter by quarter, and hopefully in the fourth quarter, there's a chance that that we can pull it out. Well, Coach, we really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's a busy week for you, and uh, just wish you nothing but success. It's been a lot of fun to have you on the show, uh, and 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 you know, Strunky was right. I guess he's he's now trying to play your agent. So I don't know, maybe you owe him a hamburger or a barbecue <laughs> or something like that. But thank you so much for joining oh, us on the show, and and, and good luck. It was my Friday. pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yep, taking a break. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Coming back with more. This is High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 16 12's cutting edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. 
The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K.com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2016, High School Football America and USA Today High School Sports teaming up to give you great high school football coverage from around the nation and specifically here from Southern California. Check them out at usatodayhss.com. Well, speaking of Southern California, when uh, High School Football America arrived here uh, now four plus years ago, there were a couple of coaches that went to the top of the list that uh, opened their arms and welcomed us and one of those guys guys is on the line right now. Mike Machetti, who uh, on Tuesday surprised a lot by stepping down at La Mirada after nine wonderful years, a state championship last year. Uh, he's become a good friend of, of the uh, program here and a good friend of us at High School Football America. He's on the line to talk about uh, a real good run, what lies ahead. And he's also going to talk about a couple of teams they played this year that were playing for a state championship this weekend in California. Welcome to the show, Mike. Good to be good to be back. It seems seems like yesterday we were doing this what six six seven years ago yeah. when, when, when we were first starting. Yeah, well, it was only only four time, years time, ago. Time flies, buddy. Yeah, I, well, that just means we're both getting much much older, and uh, it's been a great run. Um, nine years, as I said, I'll give the the people a couple of stats here: seventy eight and thirty four. I think one that stands out to me, and I remember you and Jim Phillips calling me a lot talking about all the kids that were getting looked at and then getting scholarships. We'll talk about what you. You've done there, but uh, let's just kind of start with the, the, the news of the day, which is, uh, as I said, most people, all the reporters said it was a shocking announcement. What what led to you uh, deciding that it was time to at least step aside at La Mirada? Um, you know, there, there, there was a lot of things, but I, I, I just think, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, a guy like Coach Wyatt at Edison, who, who, who's done this for 30-something years, but uh, I, I just really thought that we became a little complacent this year as, as, as a program and, 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 and maybe I'm overreacting, but I, I just think kids, I think it's going to be good for the school. It's going to be good for the kids. It's going to be good for me. You know, when you, when you say the same things 
over and over. And, uh, you know, I just think, you know, kids get tired of it and, and, uh, you know, the kids did a great job. They, they did everything we asked, but I, I just thought there was, there was something missing this year and there was a little bit of complacency and, uh, possibly a lot of that had to do, you know, with me, you know, being, being here for nine years. And I just thought it was in, in, in my best interest and, and the football program's best interest just to, uh, to step away and, and move on. Well, I got to admit, uh, after because I was at the Edison game, the championship game that you lost, and I was going to say uh, goodbye to you. And I kind of looked at the look on your face, and it was just not Mike, and it was more than just losing. So maybe I'm reading, you know, 2020 hindsight is good on the Monday morning quarterback. But uh, yeah, I, I, Jeff, I knew it. I knew it there. I mean, I knew walking off the field that that was it, and uh, you know, that was a, it was a devastating loss. It wasn't an overreaction either, but. Uh, that was it really was a devastating loss, and there's nothing worse than being in a locker room with you know with a hundred kids and everyone's crying and it's uh you know i i I don't handle it well you know I know a lot of coaches don't handle it well, but you know that that Edison game is something that that'll that I'll think about you know for a long long time until and i'm gonna I'm gonna coach again someday it's just I'm not gonna coach right now, but that's it's something that's gonna motivate me and um you know, I'll rejuvenate my batteries and, and, and come back swinging and, and stronger because of it. Good. Let's let's get this positive. We're talking with Mike Machete tonight at La Mirada <laughs> because there are a lot of positive things here. Certainly the last game not, but um, like I said, 78-34, and 34, a state championship last year. Let's let you smile a little bit here. What are some of the things you and your staff did that you guys are just so proud of over what's almost a, a whole decade there as the head coach? Well, n- number one, uh, you know, we'd play anybody anywhere. It didn't. It didn't matter uh, the size of the school, where they were at. You know, that's what we prided ourselves on. So, you know, in our in our nine years, we played every uh, program in the area that that that, that was a powerhouse: Modern Day, St. John Bosco, Servite, Orange Lutheran, La Habra, uh, St. Paul at the time, um, La Serna, Oceanside, Los Alamitos, Edison. I mean, I, I could go on and on. Uh, that's that's one thing that we're really proud of. We we played a you know an extremely tough preseason schedule, and the kids were always up for the challenge. The kids, the community, everybody wanted to play the, the, the big time programs that that we played. You now we didn't have a lot of success, but uh, with with Trinity League teams. But this year we finally you know got over the hump and you know had a big win against Orange Lutheran. And uh, number two, you know what what we pride ourselves on as a, as an administration and as a coaching staff here is trying to get as many kids to the next level as we possibly can. And, you know, it's a total team effort. We actually have an academic, uh, advisor, Craig McElveen that uh, gets a coaching stipend that does all of our academic stuff along with me, checking grades constantly, transcripts, sending them out. Um, and, and, an administration that's really helpful when, when colleges come on campus that, that, that pulls kids out of class so they can meet the coaches. Um, but that's, you know, what really makes us tick is trying to get as many kids to the next level as we can. And I think we had 44 kids in a nine year period that signed, uh, you know, whether it was division one, division two, II, division three or an AI. That's an impressive number, uh, much, much more important than the, the wins and losses. Although, like you said, as a coach, uh, the W's and L's are the ones that uh, kind of linger on you. Mike Machete is on the line. La Mirada High School uh, announced on Tuesday that he's stepping down. But what a wonderful job he did there with the kids. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about the community itself. Uh, you, you born and raised there. You were a two-sport athlete before going on to play at Colorado. Uh, for the people listening that don't know about La Mirada, and I'm sure there's plenty of them right now, um, what's it like to coach at a public school at a, in a town where you grew up and had a lot of, you know, athletic success yourself. Well, it's a, you know, it's a dream, it's a dream come true. And, and you know, and it's hard to imagine um, myself ever coaching anywhere else. I mean, I, I grew up in this town. I, I, I grew up as a little kid coming to La Mirada football games with my dad and, and coming to, I remember when I was nine years old, coming up to summer practices and, and then watching La Mirada practice and thinking, God, look how big these guys are. And so it, it really was a dream come true. It's, it's a unique town in a sense where there's only one high school in the town. There's, there's, there's not really a freeway uh, near the school. If you've ever been here or a major cross street, it's kind of 
tucked in between a golf course and, and a park. And, uh, you know, La Mirada has got great tradition, got a lot of pride. And, uh, you know, the goal was, and, and, and we accomplished some of the goals that, that we set out to do, but, you know, the goal is to eventually be a, a Division One football program that's competing with Trinity League teams and Long Beach Poly and, and schools in Division One on, on a daily basis. Um, when we first started, you know, we were in Division, I don't even remember, in 2008, we were in Division 12 or something, and we eventually moved to Division 5, and now we're at Division 3, and probably next year we're going to be Division 2 or 1. So that's been the goal as a staff and a program to to, to keep climbing and, and, and eventually compete you know, with Southern California's best on a yearly basis. And you did that. Uh, you said it, I mentioned it earlier, I was at the Orange Lutheran game this where you got the win. I can still remember the, the smile on your face. Um, before we dive into the two teams playing for a state championship, I, I like to educate our listeners here, and, and, and maybe it's my own personal grind that I have, but I think nowadays, um, you know, the, the general listener, we got a lot of coaches that listen, but the, the average fan out there, the, the, the parent and all that, doesn't understand what the coach at the high school level goes through. And, I, I, you know, the one thing that I've always loved about you, I'll take you back to another loss you had. I remember one of the, our first year here in 2012, you had an early exit from the playoffs. We had you set up to be on the show. You lost. I thought, well, he's not going to come on, and you did, which showed me something about you. I mean, it was sort of like you meet it head on. T- tell the listeners out there a little bit, uh, and this probably came into your decision. Like you said, you thought maybe the message was getting a little stale. What, what does a high school coach go through these days? Don't relate it to La Mirada, but educate the listeners out there because, folks, you got to understand, coaches go through a lot. They're, they're fathers at some level now. They're, they're not only coaches, they're counselors and all that. Could you do that, Mike? Yeah, I, you know, I just think coaches and, and football in general has, has to build a wall and, and, and start attacking back at, at what's going on because there's a major attack on, on football from Pop Warner to high school to college to the NFL. Um, you know, when, when you put ESPN on, all you do is hear about concussions and, and all these negative things you know, about football. And I'm definitely not a victim. Um, I've been humbled. I'm, I'm grateful that I even had an opportunity to coach high school football. And, you know, we pride ourselves on a program to be grateful and be humble. So I'm, I'm not going to, Jeff, I'm not going to come on the show and, and complain about all the, the bad things about being a high school football coach. Um, there, there's so many great things. You, you have such a, you know, the, the emails, the, the text messages I got last night that my family got, you know, you don't even realize the impact that you have on, on people's lives. And, and, and that's, that's what I'm thinking about today. I'm not, I'm not thinking about the, you know, the, the struggles enough. that <laughs> co- that coaches do have. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. It is. Yep. It, it is tough, but in the bit, in the big picture, um, you know, I'm just grateful for everything. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. Um, and, I, and 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 grateful that I was able to do this for nine years. And you know, in the real world, there's really there, there's really bad things going on in the world. And and you know, having a parent complain about something or an administrator complain about something in the big picture, it's really not that big of a deal. And I'm just I'm just humbled and grateful you know, for being able to be able to coach. And that's why, like I said, folks, he's classy. I knew he would take the answer and, and or take the question and give the answer that it needed to be given. Now let's let, wrap things up here. Uh, obviously, it would like you'd like to be you, uh, like last year, playing in a state championship game. But two of the teams playing this weekend, St. John Bosco, ranked number two in our uh, national rankings, and uh, Saint, uh, San Clemente uh, playing for a state championship. You played both. You lost to Bosco. You beat San Clemente. Can you give us a little scouting report here? Uh, I know once uh, your season's over, it's sort of like maybe you bond as a community and say, let's root for the SoCal teams. But uh, how good is Bosco going against uh, the legendary uh, De La Salle? Maybe not as good as usual, but uh, certainly a good football team nonetheless. No, I think uh, think that's going to be a good football game. But, uh, you know, St. John Bosco is uh, is a different animal. I mean, they, they, they can throw the ball. They're very physical up front. Uh, they're not a one-dimensional team, and if you notice, you know the teams that usually win championships aren't one-dimensional. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, you know, that's really what hurt modern day. Modern day had you know the glorious you know offensive numbers or quarterback threw seventy touchdowns, but when it comes down to it in December, you have to be able to run the ball and you have to be able to stop the run. And 
And Bosco is, they're athletic, they're, they have great depth, they're physical up front, they play great run defense, and they're very physical running the ball. And the quarterback makes plays. So it's going to be a tough game. they got to go up north and, and play against a, a storied program, but I, I really do think Bosco's going to find a way to win the game. Uh, San Clemente, San Clemente is just an extremely well-coached team. They're very scrappy. And they, they have one of the top quarterbacks in the country that just competes and makes plays with his legs. He can throw uh, defensively. Uh, they, they run an odd front and they shift and walk around and move. And, and, and right now they're just finding ways to, to outscore teams. Um, they're, they're finding ways to get turnovers defensively. Uh, those kids, uh, those kids play together and they're scrappy and they're hot. Yeah, um, I don't know anything about who San Clemente's playing. I've never seen film of, you know, who they're even playing. But uh, uh, you know, San Clemente's a good, scrappy football team. It's well coached, and they'll, they'll, they'll play to the whistle and play to the last second. And you know, they have they have all the momentum in the world with them right now, so they're going to be tough to beat. And let's wrap this up uh, on on the high note. Uh, like I said, last year at this time, uh, you were you're heading to Sacramento. You you ended up with a state championship. Kind of the local boy meet, makes good, if you will. Um, let's let's go out on that. I mean, where does that rest in the in the mind of nine years as the head coach? It's got to be somewhere near the top. I know you mentioned two others, but can you relive that moment a little bit for us? Yeah, Jeff. It was uh, you know, early on. Uh, you know, Three or four years ago, we took the whole team to the Home Depot Center and, 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 and uh, early June. Uh, we got buses, went down there, walked the field. Uh, you know, people, I remember people on our campus said, what do you guys think? You guys are nuts. There's no way you can play for a state championship. But that was our dream. That was our goal. Uh, we got together as a team, uh, sat in the stands and, and, and just visualized playing for a state championship. And this is where the state championships played. Um, they ended up moving the state championship game, but it was always at the Home Depot Center in Carson. So it's it's a great feeling thinking back. Uh, you know, people saying that you can't do something. <laughs> uh, you know, you're not going to be able to win a state championship at a school like La Mirada. And uh, you know, I, I, I believe three years later, you know, we were holding <laughs> that trophy on our on our home field uh, as state champions, and you know, we beat a really really good team, Tampa Lindo. Uh, they're playing for a state championship again. I think it's the third year in a row that they've played for a state championship. So, but Jeff, it's and we've talked about this. It's that, that's that, that's a big highlight of what we've done and what we accomplished. You know, being state champions. Um, but, you know, what really what, what we're really proud of is just how many kids and families that we've impacted. Uh, you know, we don't wave a magic wand getting kids scholarships, but. The work that goes behind the scenes of, you know, text messaging coaches and, you know, we have a, a, a social media guy, Jim Phillips, that runs our Facebook page and, and Twitter accounts and, you know, the phone calls and, you know, sending the, the, the tape out and faxing transcripts just all day long. And it's a total team effort of administrators, um, football operations and, and coaches and, and, you know, 44 kids signing a letter of intent in nine years at a school that you know really doesn't have a football budget is a public school is is incredible and that's what we're proud of yep and i think the uh, the phrase is hard work pays off and that's definitely what you guys did mike we appreciate you taking the time to join us in the show appreciate your friendship now I, as i said to you i texted you yesterday now that you're not coaching you, you have the ability to come down here to laguna beach uh, trish is a good cook you know you may want to bring the family <laughs> down here and enjoy that retirement at least <laughs> in the short term <laughs> Yeah, yeah, be care- there's an old saying, be careful what you wish for. I, I might be there. And, 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 and you know what? In a couple of years from now, you know, I want to convey this to all the listeners, but uh, you guys have been absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see you guys on Fox Sports or ESPN or something down the road because you guys truly love helping high school coaches, high school kids, um, and there's just a special warmth that you guys have in your heart for, for caring about high school sports and, you know, not just in California and Texas, all over the country. And, and, and the work that you guys do is absolutely incredible. And people should be grateful that, that there's people like you, uh, uh, you know, helping out with, 
with uh, getting the word out about what's going on in high school football. Well, you, you, you caught me off guard on that one. Thank you so much. That, that means a lot coming from you, and I just appreciate it. I and mean, like I said, we're going we're gonna to break a little bread here sometime soon. And uh, just, again, congratulations to you and your staff. And, you know, uh, that, that's really, you know, what we do it for, for guys like you, and I'm glad you've picked up on that. So have a great time. Have a Merry Christmas, and I'm sure we'll be uh, talking again after the new year. Thanks, Mike. All right, Jeff. Thanks, and HPT, baby. There you go. Take care. Taking a break. Coming back with more. This is High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, you'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 16 12's cutting edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets be gone. The debris inhibitor razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you 
can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2016, High School Football America and USA Today High School Sports teaming up to give you great high school football coverage from around the nation and specifically from Southern California. Check them out at USA Today HSS. Dot com. Well, if you're just joining us, we've uh, made a stop in Texas. We we're just in Southern California. We're going to keep it here in the uh, home stomping grounds of Southern California to talk to a good friend who we uh, first talked to way back on March 22nd, 2012. Seems only like yesterday that Chuck Peterson joined us here as the new head coach of Orange Lutheran. Uh, last Friday, uh, Chuck and Orange Lutheran decided to uh, mutually part ways, and Chuck is joining us because we thought no better way. We started with you. We're going to end with you, at least at this chapter of the uh, coaching career, and Chuck on the line right now to join us and talk about a very, very good run with the Lancers. Welcome to the show, Chuck. Hey, thanks for having me, Jeff. And it is fitting that we... uh we end it uh, together as well. Yeah, and bookending this, and just for the listeners who haven't heard you before, a little bit of your resume I'm going to give here. Uh, uh, prior to, to coming to the high school ranks, uh, had a long, long history at uh, the Air Force, uh, ascended to the offensive coordinator there. Uh, we all know what the Air Force do- did under his reign. He was the assistant coach of the year uh, by the American Football Coaches Association, also spent time with uh, Todd Dodge's staff when they were at uh, North Texas and now here in Southern California. And uh, during his reign at Orange Lutheran, uh, making it uh, to the playoffs in one of the toughest leagues in the country, arguably, uh, you know, one or two each and every year with the Big North back in New Jersey. Uh, three uh, playoff uh, seasons uh, last year, 2015, I should say, not this past year, but 2015, making it to the quarterfinals of the Pac-5, one of the toughest playoff divisions in the country. And, uh, you know, Chuck, let's, let's kind of talk about the time there, because I, I know when we spoke to you, you know, back in 2000, 2012, it was real important for you to take your talents as a coach to a faith-based uh, school. And I know you did a lot of things with the young men off the field and all that. How would you characterize the five years with uh, Orange Lutheran? Uh, unbelievably uh, tremendous opportunity for my family and I, Jeff. Um, I would not trade the five years I had at, at Orange Lutheran for anything in the world. Um, yeah, I'm proud of the of the things that we accomplished, uh, not only on the field but off the field. But it's just been a a, a true blessing for my entire family. Uh, I had two children graduate from Orange Lutheran. Uh, my wife uh, is still a teacher there, and uh, we will only look back on our five year journey as um, you know with happy thoughts. Yeah, and it was uh, you know great to get to know you and Roya. You you know full disclosure here, you've both been down here and broken bread with Trish and myself, and enjoyed getting to know you away from the X's and O's. And I think that's the thing that you know strikes me when it comes to you um, as as just a person. I mean, you've got a lot of faith, and 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 you, your your love of of kids is is tremendous. Um, tell me a little bit about um, how all that melds together, because everybody you know thinks of the Trinity League and they see a Bosco playing for a state championship and national rankings and modern day and all the teams that are in there tell tell the listeners a little bit about how that league is able to take things you know away from the x's and o's and and wins and losses because it is a true student athlete experience can you explain that to the listeners yeah i I think um first of all you know i cut my teeth in the uh in football with some tremendous faith-based coaches i i had the opportunity at air force to play for Ken Hatfield, and then uh, followed that up with my majority of my coaching career with Fisher DeBerry, and uh, and so that's kind of what I, I I knew and how I, I tried to do things. Um, you know, when I came into Orange Lutheran, I had three goals, and I told my families and my kids this that um, I was going to come in and, and hopefully teach them some Texas tough if they'd show me some Cali swag, and I and I think we accomplished that. Uh, secondly, I promised them that. I would um, help them uh, to become the men that God needed them to be. 
And then thirdly, I, I talked to the parents about uh, I was going to partner with them to, to help them raise their boys into men. And I can feel really good about leaving that way. Uh, feel like we did uh, those things and much more. Uh, it's, it's a great league, not only because of obviously the athletes and the coaches, but, it, but again, it's also more than just the game itself. And, and so when you get a whole league of faith-based schools as, as we compete in, uh, it, it makes it even that much more special. No, and and it comes through uh, getting to know all of the coaches in the league. And like I said, I, I just happen to have a little bit more time spent with you. And we, I think it's always important too to to step away from that field and get a look at uh, but what everybody does. And then we've certainly done that as as families. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about um, the the change in the game and all that. Obviously, you're not done coaching. We've talked about that. Um, tell me a little bit about the pressure on coaches and and you know what listeners should understand about that. Again, I know. Um, um, this is not talking about the the separation from Orange Lutheran, but in general, you've always had some great sure. insight, and I, I'd love to know what your take is because we just had Mike Machetti on the on the line, a guy that was very successful, a guy you know, you played uh, this year against him and all that, and and he you know he spoke ab- about the fact that there is pressure, and uh, you know is that a good thing or a bad thing for the sport of high school football? I think that's the direct question I'll ask you. You know what? I first of all, I just say that you know I'm not saying all this to to get sympathy for. For me or any other coach, um, it, you know, we know what we signed up to do when we signed up to do it. Um, and I think for each one of us, we all have our different reasons of being in the game. You know, certainly for me, it's it's about making a difference and an impact in kids' lives. Um, there's pressure in that in itself. Um, and, and ultimately, regardless of what happens on the scoreboard, if you fail in that job, you failed uh, life. And... And so I always took that responsibility and certainly that pressure uh, more um, to heart than anything else that I did uh, and will continue to do that if fortunate uh, to, to continue a career that I started 29 years ago. Uh, obviously, the on-the-field pressure is, is there and uh, continues to increase uh, yearly. It seems like it, it used to be the... The NFL was the pressure league and then the colleges, but I think uh, now it's extended much more to the, to the high school game. And, um, you know, certainly that's disturbing in some cases, uh, but at the same time I think everybody that does it uh, knows what they're getting into. And, and for me to uh, say that I have more pressure than uh, somebody else in a different line of work, um, we all have pressure to be the best that we can be and provide for our families and, um, my chosen profession is just happens to be uh, coaching uh, football at this point in time. So, um, you know, I mean, obviously we could talk a whole segment just about that itself. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I welcome the challenges, but more importantly, I just, I just wanted to do my best to raise men. Uh, and, and I think I've tried to do that to the best of my ability. Yeah, and I know you have Chuck Peterson on the line, former uh, head coach at Orange Lutheran here in Southern California, and you did have that long stint at the Air Force and then North Texas, so you had that college background. You sometimes get used to it. How surprised were you uh, when you stepped into the, the high school ranks at, at, at what you just described there? I mean, certainly you're not a dummy. You, <laughs> you've you been around the block once or twice, but, right. uh, but, but how surprised were you about the, the pressure uh, – on the high school student athlete these days? Um, you know, I think that's changed a lot and probably um, was surprised at that, to be very honest with you. Um, now, I knew that the league was tremendous. The coaches were tremendous when, when I came in here. Um, and I, I understood what big-time high school football was because I had recruited in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for the better part of 23 years. So, You know, that in itself wasn't a real surprise, but the surprise has been in the way that football has changed, um, and and in my opinion, for um, not the better. Um, It has become a lot more like uh, the basketball world, and uh, and I don't know if that's a a great direction, a positive direction. Um, You know, I'm getting videos of sixth-grade quarterbacks wondering um you know 
if I was going to, quote, recruit them to come to Orange Lutheran. And, um, <laughs> you know, there are people that get into these kids and families much earlier, um, you know, similar to the street agent in basketball. And so by the time they get to high school age, um, there's a sense of entitlement already. Um, and, you know, we wonder why sometimes that there's issues uh, – when they get to college, I think it's just perpetuated. Um, and so it's a shame because the innocence of high school football is, um, you know, isn't near what it used to be. Um, yeah, I loved old school where you could play football in the fall. As soon as your last game was over, you picked up a basketball or you went on a wrestling mat. And then after that season, you picked up a, a baseball glove or you ran track. And while we encourage that and, and work really hard, and one of the things I'm most proud of at Orange Lutheran is the, uh, the multi-sport athletes that we did have, um, very difficult uh, in today's world to be able to allow kids to do that. And really, that has nothing to do with the in-the-building uh, coaches or administrators. It's um, the travel baseball that are putting pressure on kids to, to mm-hmm. play year-round, but AU basketball, um, and now the advent of seven on seven, and you've got kids that are um, offered getting offered scholarships that have nothing to do with what they've done on the football field. It's about seven on seven, and and that's absolutely frightening. Yeah, and earlier in the show, uh, Shane Mobley, who I know you very, you know very well, coached your son Chase at Prosper. He talked about the multi-sport athlete, and you know we didn't go into it because we were talking about the fact he's playing for a state championship. But with you, I, I'd like for you to kind of explain to the parents out there that are listening to this and the and the student athletes the importance of not not just you know kind of getting a break from the sport, but what it, it does certain things for you, right? You, you you improve certain skill sets by looking at other sports, and I know you were that in in high school school and, and, and whatnot. Could you explain that to the, the listeners out there? What it What is really important about being a multi-sport athlete? Well, I think you, you know, it's like anything else. You need, to, you need to take some time away, both mentally and physically, um, to develop. And, and, and certainly, you develop different skill sets. You develop uh, a different mindset, a, a different competitiveness. Um, you know, I've always said if I had a choice, the three sports that I would uh, encourage a kid to play if, if you wanted to be a great football player would be football, wrestling, and track. Because mm. they're completely different. But, but the things that you develop on a wrestling mat or on a, on a, around a track are things you can't coach. And you try to build those things. Um, but, again, it, it goes back to, you know, you've got kids at seven years old uh, playing a hundred and something games a year in baseball. And, uh, and I, I think, you know, from that standpoint, yes, the kid's going to probably get better in baseball, but I do think, um, you know, uh, the younger you are, the less specialized you have to be because who knows what you're going to be. And ultimately at the end of the day, very few kids that play any athletics at the high school level, um, are blessed enough to receive scholarships for their sport, um, and then certainly uh, to the next level, even the NFL or Major League Baseball or whatever we're talking about. And so that being said, you know, if, if you invested in your child's education by putting the money into a, a, a growing mutual fund account when they were seven as opposed to taking them in travel soccer at seven, um, I guarantee you, you'd have a free education paid for by the time they were 18. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a shame that you look at the, the opportunities that kids have to do so many different things. And, um, you know, we're making choices for them at seven, eight, nine years old, what they're going to do for the rest of their life. And very frankly, the rest of their life athletically ends at 17, 18. 
and that's and, and that's sad. And we could spend, like you said, uh, several segments on on that topic. Chuck Peterson, a good friend of ours here at High School Football America, longtime college uh, football coach, high school coach here at Orange Lutheran, and uh, you know, we, you and I are good friends with with Jason Strunk, Strunky as we we know him, and writing the turnaround yep. course. I always like talking to Strunky because he can compare and contrast, you know, uh, Pennsylvania football, Florida football, and Texas football, having coached there and or and or played there, and uh, you know, you have that Texas background and. We all know how good Texas football is. I, I've never had the, the opportunity to ask someone like yourself about, you know, compare and contrast Texas versus Southern California football. Can you do that for us? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in a nutshell, it, it's, it's apples and oranges. And I say that uh, with all sincerity because the way the uh, Texas high schools are set up, um, they don't mix, as a general rule, private and public schools. Mm-hmm. And in the uh, California ranks, obviously, privates and publics are mixed together. Um, the other thing I think is different is in the Texas uh, programs, majority of them, uh, you have your feeder schools coming from your junior high programs. So in Sweetwater, for instance, where Coach Mobley is, he has control over his junior high program. So those kids that 11 and 12 are going to run his offense, his defense, and they're a, uh, an extension of, of what they are in high school. And so there's that, um, you know, I guess knowledge, and, and they come in with a, a, a great background before they even start ninth grade. Um, at, in, in California, you have it set up differently because most uh, kids come from a Pop Warner world. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, it, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge because you have kids from all over that make up, say, the Inland Empire Ducks. And so you've got two or three of them going to J. Sarah. You've got a couple more going to Modern Day. You have a couple more going to Corona Centennial. And there's not as much of a carryover as far as loyalty and system. Hmm. Um, the other thing is in a Pop Warner world, if you're a big kid and you have to find a different uh, league to play in to play tackle football when you're in seventh and eighth grade because you may be too big, that's not necessarily the case in Texas. A seventh and an eighth grader are going to play tackle football in the school. And so for that, I think a Texas high school big kid is developed earlier, but he may uh, be more tapped out. Um, you get a California big kid like we had Logan Basky that's at Oregon now. His first time ever putting a helmet on was as a, as a ninth grader, mm. and he was 185 pounds. And by the time he left here, he was, you know, 280 um, and went from a freshman tight end that didn't want to hit anybody to a left offensive tackle was as good as anybody in America. And, and, and that's really a remarkable – journey to see that happen but it happens a lot i don't know if that happens as much in texas um the skilled athletes i think are you know the the california kids have always been known for their uh great ability to throw and catch the ball uh for years that was where texas lagged behind um because the seven on seven world in texas is completely different than here in california Uh, i still think the um as a general rule they're probably more just raw athletes here in, in the state of California. Um, yeah, I could go on and yeah, on. That's a pretty good uh, breakdown. State, you know, and I've been fortunate. I've coached high school for one year in, in Florida. I've recruited Pennsylvania and Ohio, and then, of course, recruited and played in Texas and California. And I don't know if there's many other states other than those, uh, maybe add in Georgia, and, uh, you know, but other than that, it's a. Uh, uh, I'll take any of them, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. And I always have to add Ohio in there as, as the Keystone Stater that I am. Whenever I, I, I ignore Ohio, so i got to throw them in like the big seven that you're talking about there. Chuck Peterson on the yeah. line. We're going to wrap up this interview. A couple of questions for you. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we uh, off, offline I talked to Shane Mobley at Sweetwater about you, and he had some wonderful things to say about how you helped him in a couple of situations uh, prepare for uh, an opponent. But uh, i, I got to be honest, the, the, the most enjoyable part of the interview earlier 
earlier on the show, which you did not hear, was my conversation with him about taking his players when he was at Prospering, your son Chase played there, to the cemetery. Now, I got that little nugget from you, obviously. It was a great story. So I got to ask you as a parent, take off the, the football coaching hat and all that. Uh, what'd you think when you heard that your son's coach was taking him to a cemetery to talk something other than football? Well, you know, what's interesting is that whole year, I mean, they, um, it was a magical year for them. And of course he went into probably telling you that they won the state championship and they played the next to last game in um, the old Texas stadium. And until, you know, I think about two months later, they blew it up, but the interesting thing about that is they took a group of kids, um, you know, Chase included, who was five foot eight, 145 pounds soaking wet. And it was all of the, the community rallied behind that team to win that thing. But what was interesting is I didn't know they did some things on Thursday night with their team dinners. And then I didn't realize coach Mobley was doing all that. And, um, every week he had something different for them. And the main rule that was always said was that what happens here stays here and what you hear here stays here. And I didn't find out till a couple of years later. <laughs> and even then it wasn't specifics from Chase, but the impact that those Thursday nights had on really a lot of kids' lives. And um, I would have loved to have been a part of that, but, Obviously, if if you bring in outsiders, then kids aren't um, able to share like they want to. And so he credits what they did Thursday night with a lot of the success that they had. And the cemetery was just just one of those uh, events. Yeah, it was it was a wonderful story. And uh, not to, to, to have Chase at the top of the heap there as your son. Uh, I got to ask you, since it uh, just happened over the weekend, and I know you're an Air Force guy, but uh, Army beating Navy and your son uh, there at, uh, at the Naval Academy. Uh, Brady, uh, t- I'm, ass- I'm assuming you watched the game. What did you think when you heard that the, the cadets uh, snapped a long losing streak? Well, you know, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword because I can never say that I'm glad they won. Because um, <laughs> I've got a I've got a dog in 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 two of the three hunts. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, the just the the actual game itself, I had never seen that game in person until uh, last year, and uh, it's like nothing that you could ever imagine. Um, take a group of boys uh, or men at that point and know what they're going to do once they graduate. And the game itself is uh, such a big deal throughout the whole course of the year at, at all three academies. And so um, even though we're publicly talking about it, you know, I, I hurt for the Navy kids because mm-hmm. I've been in that same locker room after a game against army or, or Navy when I was at air force and was devastated. And, um, you just, you can't even imagine, uh, the, the range of emotions that you go through. I've been on that other locker room a lot of times when the elation was as high as you could get. And so I really had very mixed emotions because I was devastated, certainly for Brady and mm-hmm. coach Nehemiah and the, the guys at Navy. But in the same sense, I, you know, I, I felt, uh, a little bit for those army kids and was, was really happy, um, in a sense, because they, they relieved a a lot of burden. And, um, you know, so, you know, that's the great thing about that game. I've seen, uh, that game turn in many different ways. And, uh, for the army kids to, to come away with, um, uh, victory, you could just see the joy and the relief in their faces and, Certainly, uh, Munkin was uh, probably the most relieved in, in America. <laughs> yeah, like I tweeted out, uh, you know, the winner in that game, Americans who are defended by these wonderful kids. And I, uh, I'll leave on, on that one note because I know you're proud of, of your entire family. But uh, tell us, uh, Dad, the, uh, the dad, and then Dad, the football coach, and the conversation with mm-hmm. Brady when he said that he wanted to, to serve our country uh, and, and, and not go to Air Force. Uh, what was that? Give, give us a little fly on the wall. What was that like? What was the advice? Yeah, it was, I was, well, I was just proud. Um, I, I feel like I was a kind of an innocent bystander. I wanted him to make his own decision in his own mind. Uh, and I think he did that. Um, 
he just felt a real comfort uh, at Navy with the, the people that were there, the, um, the coaching staff, uh, the players. And, you know, he's never regretted a day that he's been there. Um, but as a dad, certainly, you know, I, I was just happy for him that he was able to achieve something that he wanted to, to achieve. Um, you know, so I kind of stayed out of it in, in that regard uh, as far as him making a decision one way or the other. Um, he also had an opportunity to go to West Point and just felt, felt comfortable with the Naval Academy and uh, certainly happy that he did. Well, we're just proud of him for for serving us and just proud to call you uh, uh, our friend. Uh, It's just been so much fun to get to know you. We could probably, uh, we should probably do a show when we were here, folks, and we were having dinner with Trish and Roya. uh, Of course, we kind of put the girls out of the conversation and we we were talking more (laughs) baseball than football, which was which was enjoyable. So maybe we'll bring you back on the show here uh, and talk a little baseball come springtime. We can pick the the all time greatest. What what was your what was the contest again? You you told me I had to pick the if I had one team to put together, one position for one game. Right. Is that, yeah, that's what it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and that's such a fun – that's fun because, you know, you get back and forth and you argue. And, you know, I, I saw somebody tweet the other day, and, and it's been crazy in my mind. Another great game is if you had one sporting event in history to change, what would it be? Mm-hmm. And that really intrigues because, you know, there's a local thought um, – you know, there's a national thought and, you know, in some ways a worldwide view. But uh, so maybe one that'll be uh, an exercise for you and me at a, at a different time. Um, right now, I don't have a job, so I'm, I'm free to do that a lot. <laughs> Well, I, you, you just made me think. I think the game I would change would be my Little League game as a 12-year-old, our all-star game. We were getting close to going to Williamsport, and we lost in some district game. So I'd like to change that one. So we'll start our next conversation at dinner, <laughs> and we'll go from there. Chuck, thank you so much for your game, friendship. Game six for me. Game six of the World Series, Rangers, Cardinals. Oh. oh well, I've got a ga- I, I, I've got a game six I'd like to change too in 1986, but that's <laughs> as a Red Sox. And there fan. we go. I get, I get that. Well, Chuck, but again. You love Bill Butler, <laughs> well, it's always pleasure talking to you. We will get together, the families, and and have. But seriously, you know, uh, it's been nothing but a joy to to get to know you and and the way you coach, and more importantly, how you how you approach life, and it means a lot to us. So look forward to it. Have a very merry Christmas, happy. New Year, and I know we'll catch up after the New Year. Thank you, Jeff, and uh, my best to you and Trish during the holidays, and be careful going back east. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break. We're going to wrap things up here on a great High School Football America show tonight. You're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at echo1612.com.
Field Turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest decision. Advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K.com forward slash football. All right, so this is it, the uh, the end of the uh, regular season and the postseason for 2016. Yes, we've got those two made-for-TV games coming up in Frisco, Texas next week. But uh, this, uh, for all intents and purposes, closes out the 2016 season championships in Texas, California, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Keep up with all the scores throughout the weekend at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com with our state-by-state Scoreboards powered by ScoreStream. Also want to thank all of our partners on tonight's show, Echo. Get instant replay on your sidelines by going to echo1612.com. Get your free demo from Crossover. Let them break down your game film for you accurately and quickly. Let you spend time with the family over the weekend. Get a free demo at crossover with a K.com forward slash HSFA. And by the good folks at Southern Sport, the makers of the debris inhibitor razor, keep those pesky rubber pellets from field turf out of your shoes and give you the great look of spatting without the high cost of tape. Use the special code HSFA when you go to TDI Razor, spelled with a U R A Z U R, TDI Razor. Dot com. I want to thank our guest on the show tonight, beginning with uh, Shane Mobley, the head coach at uh, Sweetwater High School in West Texas. I want to thank uh, Mike Machetti, former coach at uh, La Mirada, for joining us, and Chuck Peterson, the former coach at Orange Lutheran. Some great insight by a couple of real uh, top-notch professionals in the coaching profession. Uh, just glad to call them my friends. So we've got a lot going on this weekend. Again, keep coming back to highschoolfootballamerica.com as much as you can. Don't forget, if you've got a staff opening, you can get those uh, openings out there to the public around the country on our High School Football America Coaches Job Board. Just email us at jobposting at highschoolfootballamerica.com. It's free. It's a great way to open up uh, the the country and, and bring in the best talent that you can find. That's going to do it for now. This is Jeff Fisher saying good night and good sports from Southern California. You've been listening to High School Football America.